Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay, so my name is Jacob Hales, and this is the review on Lewis structure exceptions on formal charges and resonance, uh, lecture 14. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I think it's helpful to just review really quickly what Lewis structures are, and because this whole thing is built on that base. So for me, I think it's helpful just to follow these steps really methodically. And then um, once you've drawn a couple, once you have it under your belt, um, it will go by really quickly. But at first, just going through each step each time. Um, so you start by counting the valence electrons. Then you count how many you want ideally. Then you subtract them, divide by two to find the number of bonds. Uh, if you don't divide by two, that will tell you the number of bonding electrons. And then uh, when you're trying to order it, it's helpful to remember to put the most electronegative atom in the middle. Um, lots of times you can also uh, look at the formula and the formula will help you. The order of the formula is often how it works out. Um, remember that electronegativity increases across a period and increases up the rows, or yep, up the rows. So the, the top right corner, I'm not counting the noble gases is the most electronegative. And then draw the bonds first and then use the remaining electrons to put lone pairs around the atoms. Um, so just a quick, easy practice. We have CLF. So there are, if you look at our table, they're both in group seven. So seven valence electrons in chlorine, seven valence electrons in fluorine, seven plus seven is 14. Remember the octet rule, they both want eight. Eight times two is 16. 16 minus 14 is two, divided by two is one bond. And go ahead and put lone pairs around the atoms. Um, and then here's what it looks like, you can double check. Something else that I think is helpful, uh, double checking is um, you can go ahead and count and make sure that you have the same number as you did in step one. So if we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So we're good. Um, if you're struggling with Lewis structures, go ahead and pause this video and um, what helped me learn a lot was watching other people do it, watching videos on YouTube and just doing it along with them, maybe guessing a step ahead, seeing how they did it, and then seeing where you went wrong. So we're going to try another one. This is nitrate, NO3, the nitrate ion, NO3 minus. So same thing that we did before. N has five. Oxygen is in group six, and we have three of those. So six times three is 18, um, plus the five from nitrogen. Five plus 18 is 23. And then don't forget that it's an ion. We have this negative one right here. So plus another electron. So that adds up to 24. And then each one of these wants to have eight. So eight times four is 32. 32 minus 24 is eight divided by two. We're gonna have four bonds. So which one goes in the middle? Nitrogen is further to the left. So it's less electronegative. So that will go in the middle. Also remember looking at the formula might give you a hint. So here we have it. You'd also want to remember to put the bracket and then the negative one right here, or the negative charge because it's an ion. But this brings up a problem. How do you know which one of these O's gets this double bond? And that is where resonance structures come into play. 
Yep, so which O gets the double bond? So what are resonance structures? Resonance structures are just um, a tool we use that kind of show us what's going on. Um, and here's how to draw them. So you're gonna keep the atoms in the same spot. It's like we have here, we're not moving the nitrogens and oxygens around. They're always in the same spot. What we're moving is just the, the double bonds and then the lone pairs. This one has two, these have three. Um, so just like I said earlier, like if you had a, a element Z in the middle and you had another one with X in the middle, those would not be resonant structures of each other. And then you wanna make sure that they all have the same charge. Like these all have the negative one right here. So it's really similar to drawing Lewis structures. Um, it's also helpful to remember what resonant structures are not. So resonant structures are not real, actually. They're just a quick and dirty, helpful tool that we use to help us kind of see what's going on. And that's why we use them, even though they don't exist. It's kind of like Lewis structures. Lewis structures don't show 100% what's going on, but they help us get a good feel for it. Um, what resonance structures are also not is they're not switching back and forth. So going back to this one, it's not that the bond is just rotating from here to here to here to here. It's not spontaneous, but what it actually is, is it's a hybridization of all of these. So that brings us to delocalization, which is just means that the electrons are kind of shared over more than one bond, which brings us to bond order. So talking about bond order in the past is pretty straightforward. It's like the chlorine, uh, fluorine molecule that we started out with, that was just a single bond. So it had a bond order of one. Um, nitrogen N2 has a triple bond. So that is a bond order of three. Um, we use bond order, by the way, to measure the strength and the stability of a bond. So nitrogen, that N3 bond is a lot stronger, a lot harder to break than the single bond in the uh, chlorine fluorine molecule. Um, with Lewis structure, it's not quite as straightforward, but it's not very difficult. So what you do is you just take the number of bonds and then you divide that by how many possible structures there are. So with the example we've been using with the, the nitrate ion, we had four bonds. We had the one double bond and the two single bonds, one, two, three, four. And those were spread out over three different possible structures. So four divided by three is one and one third. Four bonds divided by three structures, one and one third. So that is our bond order. So we have these three different um, structures, the one resonant structure. How do we know which one is the best? Which one shows what's going on the most? So like I said earlier, it's, it's the, what's really going on is it's a hybridization of all of them, but some structures are more likely than others sometimes. And we'll see that later. Um, formal charge is a tool that helps us compare the different structures. And we're gonna talk about how to calculate formal charge next. So the way to calculate formal charge is you take the valence electrons that are normally in the atom, or which is also the group number. So hydrogen is one, nitrogen is five, oxygen is six. And then you subtract the number of bonds from that number, and then you subtract the number of electrons. So don't, it's not the number of lone pairs, each electron you subtract. And here's an example that we can go through. So the formal charge on this nitrogen has, so nitrogen is in group five. It has five valence electrons. We have, oh, there it is. We have five minus one, two, three, four bonds. 
and then zero lone pair, zero lone pair electrons, five minus four minus zero is one. So it has a positive one charge. Let's look at this um, oxygen. So oxygen is in group six and six minus one, two is four minus one, two, three, four, six minus two minus four is zero. So this oxygen has a formal charge of zero. Now let's go to this oxygen. So same, it's six minus one bond, five, minus one, two, three, four, five, six. Five minus six, negative one. This oxygen has a formal charge of negative one. And then the same is true for this oxygen over here. Um, this drawing, this is not supposed to be a double bond. They just messed up there, so ignore that. Um, but you can see that the formal charge on the nitrogen is the same. One, two, ignore this double bond. Three, four, five minus four, five, the number of valence electrons in nitrogen minus four bonds minus zero electrons is one. So nitrogen still has a charge of one. And then we're switching the oxygens. So now these two, ignoring this double bond, have the charge of negative one, and this has the formal charge of zero. And then lastly, this uh, lower left oxygen has the formal charge of zero. So because all of these have the same formal charge of these both having negative one and this having one. Each one of these resonance structures contributes equally to the actual to what's actually going on. Um, ideally, with formal charges, we want to minimize it and we want to put it on the most electronegative atom. So oxygen is more electronegative. It's closer to the top right corner. So we want to put our more, elect more negative formal charges on the oxygen. Um, let's go ahead and do a practice. I think it's really helpful to see this again. So draw all possible resonance structures of nitrite and add all non-zero formal charges. So here is a pen. So nitrite, N has five oxygen has uh, six times two, 12. And then we got this negative, so plus another one. So that is five plus 12, 17, 18. And then Ideally, each one of these wants eight. Eight times three is 24 minus 18 divided by two equals three bonds. Uh, nitrogen is less electronegative, so we'll throw that in the middle and then Put these oxygens on the side. Three bonds, one, two, three. And then we've used up one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have 12 electrons. Try and fill the octets. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 14, 16, 18. Awesome. And then, um, okay. Our other, we uh, separate resonant structures with this arrow right here. Because I'm kind of running out of room. I'll just draw underneath. We just kind of reverse this. So 
double bond here. Then a negative charge. Okay, and then we'll double check real quick. So we start with 18, we want to have 18 here. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. We're good. This has an octet, this has an octet, and this has an octet. Now let's go over the formal charges. So this oxygen, 6, minus 1, 5, minus... One, two, three, four, five, six. This oxygen is going to have a formal charge of negative one. Nitrogen five. One, two, three. Five minus three is two. And then minus one, two. It's going to have a charge of zero. Leave that blank. And then this oxygen right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Also going to have a charge of zero. Um, we can just be smart and know that this is the same here, so that this one is going to have a charge of negative one. And this makes us happy because oxygen is more electronegatives, and that's where our formal charge is. All right. Oh, that's not good. Well, you can kind of... <laughs> see that through there. That's what we have. Okay. Um, this is going back to what I was talking about earlier with formal charge. So which resonance form of CO2 will influence the bonding the most? Um, so what we're going to do here is look at the formal charge of each of these and see which one minimizes it and which one puts it on the most electronegative atom. So we'll do this real quick. Oxygen six minus one, two, three, four, five. It's gonna have a charge of positive one. Carbon has is in group four. One, two, three, four, charge of zero. And then this oxygen six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six minus seven, negative one. Okay, now let's, we'll just do what we did here, over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six minus seven, negative one. Carbon, one, two, three, four, four minus four, zero. And then this oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, positive one, six minus five is one. Okay, and then here we have um, what we, here, here we have our last one. So this oxygen, six minus two bonds, six minus two is four, minus one, two, three, four electrons in lone pairs is gonna have a charge of zero. Carbon is four minus one, two, three, four. That's gonna have a charge of zero. And then oxygen group six minus two bonds, four minus four electrons, zero. So these are all valid resonance structures for carbon dioxide, but because this one minimizes the formal charge, this is the one that influences the bonding the most. This is the one that contributes the most to the bonding. This is the one that is most likely to happen. Okay. And now we'll talk about some exceptions. So uh, some atoms that aren't very electronegative, that don't really pull a lot of electrons, don't follow the octet rule. Um, and the most common examples of these are uh, beryllium, boron, and magnesium. So here is the Lewis structure for boron trichloride. And you can see that it, boron does not fill its octet rule. Um, but the chlorines are all happy. And then sometimes um, uh, atoms will expand their octet. 
And this can happen when they have enough orbitals to um, borrow electrons from. So this only happens um, when n is equal to two or greater than two. Um, it only happens in the third period or greater, so basically from here down. So um, hydrogen, helium, none of these atoms in the top two periods, the top two rows, can expand their octet. Um, just a quick example of this is um, sulfur hexafluoride. Um, so if you did the math, you'd find that um, you'd find that you'd want six bonds and then you just put the six bonds around the sulfur and then fill in the rest of the fluorides. Um, here are some helpful links if you want to watch some more videos about it and thanks for watching.